Yo, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Go ahead, get this channel, subscribe, share at least some messages or comments. Hit that thumbs up for the like. Hit the notification bell to be informed on all episodes when they drop. I got another interesting guest coming to you here on Prison Break Raw. He's coming straight out of Washington. His name is Tyler. He's got a pretty interesting story to tell us. Uh, he's done some time up there in Washington. Was a suspect in a in a pretty big case around his city and had backslidden several times and gotten back into the drugs and the crime life but has since reformed himself and has moved forward he's starting to build his own channel he's starting to build his own brand he's moving forward with basically letting all of yous out there know that there is an opportunity outside of prison away from prison you can make it your life better you can rebound from all of the downfalls and the backslides that you had in life, and you can make something of yourselves. So we're so uh, my pleasure to bring to you my guest for tonight, Tyler from Washington. How you doing, Tyler? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, everybody. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, so I guess I'll start at the beginning. Um, you know, when I was 15, I grew, I grew up real poor, um, me and uh, a friend of mine, and uh, we, we took off at 15, and we got into, uh, you know, selling drugs, and um, at the time, it was Oxy-80s that were the big thing, and um, so we were selling them, making a lot of money, and uh, the, the Oxy scene kind of died, and it turned to heroin. Well, my friend didn't want to switch over because he thought that was a bad bad drug but i didn't really have a problem with it so we kind of severed ties on that and um i so i so i started it in the heroin and um i also started using it too um you know because i was hanging out with girls that did it and just you know ended up started ha you know um it, it you know i was with a buddy of mine and he he did it so i was just like you know tried it um so at 16, I caught my first case um, because of uh, uh, it was a. So what happened was is I went out. I got a call from a buddy and I went over to his house, and um, they had robbed one of their neighbors' house. Now we were 16 years old at this time, and um, he uh, they robbed the house, and uh, I got there. And about 40 minutes later, the police knock on the door. You know, we're hanging out, we're smoking weed, and, you know, we're chilling and uh, watching TV. And um, and it's me, him, and his brother. And him and his brother were the one that did the burglary. Uh, well, they they cuff us up. And um, anyways, we, we all ended up getting charged with residential burglary. And the brother they told the brother that they, that, so <clears throat> this, the, the one brother I know very well, his name's Nick and he'll come up later in the story. But, um, the other one, the other brother, he, um, they basically told him like he could go home if he took, if he told him every, you know, basically what they wanted to hear. So he told him that I was a part of it too, which was bullshit. But I mean, it, it is what it is. You know, um, I'm not mad at him, at him over it. it, it it's, it's done and over with, but, um, so, um, anyways, I see their dad pull up and take them and grab them and take them home. And I'm like, well, you know, what, why are they going home and why am I sitting here? And, um, and then I get taken to, to, ju to juvie and uh, I'm there for, uh, overnight. I get picked up by my parents the next day. Um, I have to go to court on it. Well, I don't go to court, you know, because I'm, I'm in the, you know, I'm in the, the drug scene and I'm in the, you know, all this and I got every, you know, all that stuff going on. So, um, I skip out, you know, so skip to a couple of years, I get to, to where I'm 18. Um, I get arrested on a warrant for that, for that. And they give me 18 days in County jail. So I go to, um, Snohomish County Jail for the first time ever, and um, I do 18 days, get out, um, and then I uh, 
I go, I go back to hustling and, um, I ended up basically what happened was I had a grow house. I was growing weed and I was also, um, still messing with, you know, the other drugs obviously. And, um, I was, you know, I was trying to be a one-stop shop, but, um, anyways, I, uh, I went to a birthday party. I hired this guy to wa- to to watch that the the plants, you know. And um, he, uh, while I was at this party, he he stopped answering my calls, and because it was like a three day birthday bash, three yeah. And um, so I, I I he's he stops answering my calls, and um, I finally uh, just say fuck it and take off, and I go back to the house. And I get there and the house is cleared out. He took uh, these tents, you know, I don't know if any, if anybody knows anything about growing weed, they know what a tent is. And um, he, they took the lights out of them, took the fans out of them, took the tents. I mean, the only thing he left was the pots and the dirt. Um, he took all the chemicals. He took everything um, that I had invested in this, you know, and, and not only did I invest in this, but someone else invested in it with me. And, you know, they were supposed to get a cut of that. So, um, you know, so basically we come together and it's, it's decided that something has to be done. And, um, so basically what happens is, is, um, this house, there's only one, one. Okay. So there's only people cause the guy lived next door to the, to the house that I was growing. Well, I knew someone that lived in that, in the house and it's like, an, it's a house, but it's apartments. So I knew someone that rented an apartment in there right downstairs from where the guy that, uh, robbed me. Um, so anyways, uh, I go, I'm not, I get a hold of dude. He lets me in the door and I tell him, Hey man, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, go somewhere and, and I'll be, I'm going to go to the store and I'll, I'll come right back. And he was like, all right, man. Cause there was a store right on the corner, right? Right. Um, this was in Everett, Washington, right off of, uh, Pacific Ave and Grand Ave and, uh, right by where the old needle exchange was. So there's a little store right there. And, um, so walk over there or no, I don't walk over there. Sorry. I I told him I'm going to walk over there and I walk outside and I, I give the dudes the thumbs up. They go up anyways. They ended up fucking this dude up really bad. And, um, I mean, they hurt this guy really bad. They, um, and then, uh, they got the weed back. Uh, there was some other stuff that he claimed was taken, but it wasn't, um, he claimed that we took some pills from him. We, that, that never happened. Um, anyway, so we, they come out, they come running out. Um, they took his phone and his, uh, keys. And uh, I guess one of the guys was drunk. One of the guys that dude sent, you know, to, to be a part of this. And, um, he's, he's stumbling as he's coming out. And, um, I guess he had almost stabbed the dude up in the, in the, in the house, in the the apartment thing. And he's stumbling down the stairs and the owner of the place opens his door and he's got a German shepherd and he like tells him to attack him. And so this dog's, starts attacking him the whole way while he's trying to get to the car and I get to the car my homie who I won't mention because um nobody else got charged for this crime but me um but he's like fuck it we're leaving him and he turns the car on and because we didn't really you know know this cat that well so he's like fuck it we're leaving him and he turns the car on and we whip around and we see him running and the dogs were <laughs> biting him on the ass and on the legs and and uh, he runs over, gets in the car, and the, the owner's walking over, and he's like, I got you, I got you. But I still had the, I had the mask on my face, and I was like, oh, shit, man. So we get out of there, and um, the next morning, we take that car to the um, impound lot, or not the impound lot. The, um, it's like a scrapyard, like where you can dispose of uh, vehicles, and they'll pay you like 500 bucks or whatever. Cause it, it was like, it was, um, it was, yeah, it was it was like a junker vehicle. Um, but, um, we had, we had put different plates on it when when we went and did this. And so, um, anyways, uh, he, he, this guy calls the cops and tells them I was robbed and I know who did it because I robbed him, you know? 
So he tells them the whole story and um, they put a warrant out for my arrest and um, they started putting me on, they put me on Washington's Most Wanted. I was in the newspaper. Uh, I mean, it, it was insane, man. I think I was on Washington Most Wanted uh, two or three times because um, I was on the run for like four months and then I got picked up the day before Christmas of two, two, uh, 2010 and um, in Washington State they sentence you by months and so I already had a felony on there and um, so I I took a deal for um, for second degree for second degree robbery, I got 31 months. Um, cause also there was some other charges. There's some other charges too. Um, you know, involved with the, with the charge. Um, but I took a, a plea for 31 months and, um, I went to Monroe, got to Monroe. Monroe, you know, was uh medium was, it was, uh, real st- cause, uh, an office, Jamie Bindle, and you can look this up on Google, was just killed. She was killed right like around the time that I got there. She was killed like I think in January. And I I sat in county until um what was it? Till almost May of 2011 in county until I went to prison. And she got killed like two months before that or something. Mm-hmm. And um uh, so they really, they really like tightened down on security. The whole prison was on lockdown for like shit, like months. And, um, and then I ended up being able to, to transfer to a uh, minimum. Well, I went to uh, Stafford Creek minimum and that place was cool. Cause like they had keys to the cells and they had TVs already in the room and you just had to pay like a couple bucks a month for cable. And uh, it was really, it would really be a, cool prison if you were just you know gonna do your thing but I got into a little bit of trouble um my points went up and they shipped me back to Monroe and that's where I served out the rest of my time and then um I've been back to Monroe on violations too because um we don't have parole anymore in Washington state we have what's called DOC and uh they got this new law on DOC where the max they can give you is 30 days for a violation. And, and, uh, but the first five violations you, you get like, you know, the first one's one day, second day, two day, you know, and, and et cetera. So, um, it's, you know, people, they don't give, you know, people don't check in, people don't, you know, it, it's, it's crazy how, how, how they, uh, you know, I, I see people all the time on the run from DOC and it's cause you know, the worst they're going to get is 30 days, you know, and I've never, I've never seen someone get 30 days. They always at least get, give you like 27. They always at least knock a couple days off. But anyways, um, so I get out of prison. Um, I go back to the drug game. I didn't have nothing. And I hook up with this, um, cat and, um, he ended up, he ended up getting popped because we separated and he ended up getting popped, um, with 32 grams of, uh, heroin. And so he went to prison and then, um, so I was, I was hustling on my own and, um, I ended up, uh, meeting back up with my buddy, buddy, uh, Nick. And that's when we become suspects in this, uh, LA, you know, now this is about a year after I've been out and, um, you know, this was in 2013 that, uh, I think it was in August of 2013 is when it happened or something. I know it was in the summer, um, towards the end of the summer, but, um, they, uh, they alleged that we, that someone owed us, some money or or something of that sort and that we went over there with the gun with guns and um a sword and um you know and they alleged that we were in the house yeah a midi the the article says medieval style sword (laughs) (laughs) 
it was a and it was yeah it was a big ass sword i seen a picture of it it was a big ass sword um did you guys go in there wearing like full suits of armor and all that shit like straight vikings or just well uh, uh no 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 nothing like that man no 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 but they they they, they allege um that we uh went in the house and um well when we went in the house uh i guess the the guy uh one, one of the guys with the sword the guy with the sword pointed to one of the people and was like take that because the dude was shooting up heroin and he was yeah. like take that fucking needle out of your arm and get on the ground now and uh dude gets on the ground takes it you know he took it out got on the ground um and then i guess why people are getting tied up because there's three people involved in this robbery uh, um why people are getting tied up i guess uh the guy um uh, this guy pops out of the closet, scares this other guy, the, the, the guy with the sword, and the, the guy with the sword chops him right in his, like, um, right in his neck down to his collarbone. And the yeah. dude, like, rips and turns and runs to the window and dives through the window. And he jumps out the window, and when he lands, he, he actually broke his leg, so he couldn't get up and move. But he's yelling and screaming, help, they're going to kill us, they're trying to rob us, they're going to kill us. And, uh, um, so we're, uh, or so they alleged that we, we took off, um, and that we, uh, there was someone out walking their dog and, um, they, they, they said that they seen our license, uh, uh, you know, our car in the area. And so they yeah. come to the house and, um, this this guy's this guy's girlfriend, this guy Jaybird, he's an he's an he's an ex NLR from California. Um, he his girlfriend tells him, "Oh well, um, they left this morning with a gun, said they were going to get some money." And um, so they so they start calling us out of the house and shit by name, and um, and we didn't know that she said this at the time. I didn't even know it till the next day, till the news, news newspaper article came out. And um, yeah, so I, basically, I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I get, um, I'm staying in there, right? I'm, and we got all the, we got all this dope in there and stuff. So basically, um, mm. there was, there was about, I don't know, man, probably a hundred grams of heroin and uh probably like four or five or six ounce probably about six ounces of meth there and a bunch of pills so um i'm in the bathroom and my buddy nick has an extra clip to a pistol in his pocket and he goes out well first first jay bird goes out after his girlfriend and then nick goes out with the with the extra clip in his pocket and then i'm in the house and i take like um bunch of this heroin and <laughs> I wrap it up and because I knew I was going to be sick in the jail, you know, and, um, I wrap it up and, uh, you know, I suitcased it, you know, um, shit that I learned, you know, being in prison, you know, you, you know, you know, you learn to become prepared. And so the rest of the, the rest of the stuff, I didn't think they were going to get a search warrant for the house. So I didn't flush any of the the drugs i i just kind of hit them you know but they found them but the weird thing is is um so anyway well let me, i'll tell that afterwards so anyways they take us to jail on suspicion of robbery because the phone allegedly so they took their phone when so they couldn't call the cops when the robbery occurred so um basically um they they come in, they get me out of the bathroom. We go to jail for suspicion of first degree robbery, first degree burglary. Uh, and they didn't charge us with the drugs or the gun and, or the, um, we had weed plants growing there too. They didn't charge us with any of that. Um, cause this was before it was legal. And, um, cause they thought they had us cooked on this shit, but, um, they didn't have any of like the mass they didn't have you know and so basically what, what our defense was is we were at the we were in the area and they must have just mistaken our vehicle for theirs and um 
So uh, basically, we're we're in there and we don't say nothing. And uh, when you in Washington or Snohomish County, when you get arrested with someone, they're supposed to separate you automatically. You're not supposed to be around them, so you, so you can like straighten out your story and stuff. So when we first get booked, they separated us. But when or oh no, they didn't. They didn't separate separate us in booking. When we got up, they separated us and put us in different tanks. But when we went to court the next day, they put us in the same holding cell. And then they, when we got into court, we were all sitting next together. And all of a sudden, you hear the judge say, "Can." Mr. So and so, Mr. So and so, Mr. So and so, please uh, separate if they are together. And, da -da -da -da. and so we all got up and separated because he called us by our last names. And <laughs> so, um, anyways, man. Uh, sorry, I get, I get off off beat a little bit. Um, so we're we're in jail with the um, and. Uh, so they, they, they take you on what's called probable cause, and they, they hold you for 72 hours. But in that 72 hours, they'll file a three-week extension. So they can hold you for three, three weeks legally while they look for evidence while, while they try to file charges on you. Um, so the three weeks goes up. It was commissary day. I ordered like $80 worth of commissary. And um, I remember like... 30 minutes after I got my commissary, um, I was getting ready to make a spread and he, uh, he told me to come over. He's like, Hey, come here. He's like, be ready in about an hour around eight o'clock. You're going to, uh, you're going to, you're going to go home. And I was like, what man, stop playing with me. And he's like, no, they didn't file charges. And I was like, all right, that's crazy. And, um, so I gave all my store out, you know, and then <laughs> That's a funny story too. I gave all my store out right to, to people there, and then I ended up going back for a DOC violation, um, like a couple of weeks later, and not one person gave me gave me anything when I got there. I had to wait till store day, but it's whatever. And then, um, you know, I've also like 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 I told you, man, I've been like six or seven different county jails. I've been to King County Jail. I've been to Score. I've been to I went to uh, Grays Harbor County Jail, and um, I'll tell that story because it's kind of kind of interesting. You know the band Nirvana? Yeah. Okay, you know their their front man Kurt Cobain? Yeah. Well, he's from Aberdeen, Washington. Well, I got in trouble in Aberdeen, Washington, and I had to do a day in jail in Grays Harbor County Jail. Well, I guess when Kurt was uh, – way younger before he even started Nirvana, he got caught spray painting uh, or something doing graffiti or something. And, uh, that was the jail they took him to. So I'm in booking and he, he said, look at the sticker. And I read this, the sticker and it says, Kurt was here. And I asked him about it and he's like, yeah, this is where we booked, booked him in at. And then, um, by that time they had built a new jail and Kurt had stayed in the old jail, but he walked me by his old, his old, the, the jail cell and there were stickers all all around it that said Kurt was here and it was kind of cool but um yeah then um the score the score jail I went um I'll tell you about that so I went to go check into DOC right mm -hmm. and I was still hustling a little bit and this is before I went totally straight I was still trying to hustle I wasn't using but I was still trying to hustle and um I was touching it with my bare fingers and I wasn't using gloves and, um, so I walk into DOC with, um, a half ounce of heroin in my pocket and, um, and he's like, all right, do you a, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to walk right back out of there. It's stupid mistakes, just stupid mistake, you know, but the person that gave me a ride there was sketchy. I couldn't leave it in his car. Or, you know, <clears throat> I, it wouldn't, I, it would have been gone. So I go in, I piss I, and I pee hot. And he's like, I thought, and usually they grab you right away and cuff you up and, you know, put you in a van and transport you to. So anyways, um, he's like, all right, we'll go sit in the front room and wait for me and uh, I'll get you ready and take you to uh, jail. I was like, all right. And I go out there and the bathroom doors open. So I run straight in the bathroom and, you know, do the, do the same thing, you know, get, get, get rid of it basically. And, um, so I take it into, um, to, so they take me to this uh, jail called SCORE, and it's in SeaTac, 
and um, it's by the SeaTac Federal Holding. And uh, <laughs> so I get there, and uh, you know, I got this half ounce, and I'm like, "Cool, man, I'm gonna make hella money off of it," because you know, I was wasn't using or nothing, and I did make a lot of money off of it. But I get they put me in my cell, right? And I went to uh, high custody there because of um, my prior charges, you know. Um, so they put me in high right. custody and, um, man, they, <laughs> I get in the room and I see up in the corner, there's a camera. They got cameras in each cell. And then you go out in the day room, there's cameras everywhere. So they, they can see everywhere in the room. So like the only spot they can't see is, um, cause there's four bunks in a room. You know, you go in, there's the toilet, there's the metal toilet on the left. And then there's, uh, two bunks on the left and then two bunks on the right against the wall on the back. And then, so if you sit in the cameras up in the right hand, or yeah, when, when you're standing in the doorway, it's up in the right hand corner. And, uh, if you sit on the, the rack that's on the right hand, if you're standing at the door, you sit like right in the corner, that's a blind spot. So we, you, we would like have to crouch up in there, and, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> it was, it was crazy, man. It was just, it, it was a trip, man. And, um, they, uh, I had, uh, sold everything I had, you know, and, um, this guy came in our room and <laughs> he, he had brought some meth in with him and I guess they didn't search him. He just had it like in his hand or something. And, uh, he got, got in the room and he didn't realize there was a camera right in the corner. And so he lays the meth on the table and he starts crunching it up. And my, uh, roomie, he's a, he, my, my, one of my roomies, he was a full blown tweaker. He's like, Oh, let me get some of that. So they're doing lines on the table. And, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm like, Hey man, there's a camera up there, man. You guys do that shit in the corner, you know? And, <laughs> um, man, about 20 minutes later, they come, they get all of us out of the cell. They take us down to the showers. They strip us out They make us, you know, do the strip out. And then, um, <laughs> They're like, so what were you guys, what were you guys doing by the table? And da, 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 da. I was like, I wasn't doing nothing. I was sleeping, you know? And, um, yeah, man, it, it's just, you know, there's, so, you know, basically the reason why I wanted to come on here is, man, is just tell you that, you know, I've made, I've made a lot of money in drugs, I've, I've, but, um, that the heartache, if you listen to the, the, to the, you know, to the like, if you listen to that whole story that I just told you, so much worse shit happened to me than good shit did. You know what I mean? It would, there were, you know, and every time, and if you ever think that you're going to be successful with drugs, man, it's just, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You know, it's a known fact. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to preach to anybody, but, um, you know, if you're looking for some advice, man, I, I, I would, I would, vote against it man because it's just it's it's just a bad bad situation to get yourself into um you know i was smart when i was in prison i didn't um i didn't i didn't i didn't use drugs when i was in prison you know i i did i, I was you know i had a little hustle going on but i didn't i didn't use any of them so i, I didn't you know get any like big debts or nothing like that so um but other than that um yeah, man. Like I said, you know, it, it's, it's got me caught up in so much, so much bullshit and it's caused me so much time. You know, I turned, uh, I turned, um, 18 months of community custody, what, what, which is what it's called DOC here in Washington into, um, I mean, I just got off of it like what, two, two and a half years ago when I went straight, you know, and, um, I've been on that since 2012, you know, so that's, that was like almost what, like five, six, six years or something like that. Seven years, something like that. So what, are you, doing, what, what are you doing with your life these days? Well, um, I'm working. I do work. Um, I do got a good job. I mean, I got my license, I got a car, I got insurance. Um, I got a place, you know, um, you know, I changed my life around, um, and I'm doing, I got a channel going, you know, it's called chain gang news. Um, 
you know, I, I basically tell them my story and I, I'm going to, I'm going to have my friends get on there. Cause all, so, so many of, almost all my friends have been either incarcerated or are currently incarcerated. And, um, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing, uh, kind of interviews with them and let, letting their, their story getting told, you know, cause, um, you know, a lot of times, uh, shit's one-sided. You only see what the newspaper tells you, but you know, you know, people, you know, so, so I want, I want to do kind of like what you're doing is interviews and, and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, man, pretty, pretty much stuff like that. And, uh, right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be dropping content on, you know, everything that I saw in prison, you know, that, that was wild. Um, you know, um, you know, about the Yak- Yakima jail and all that. And so, but how old, are, yeah. how old are you now? Me, I am 29 now, man. 29, yeah. still young. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what, uh, moving forward, so you said you have a channel, it's called Chain Gang News. Yeah. And of course, we will be putting that link on this video. Um, Thank you, man. <clears throat> what is, before, before, we, before we tune out here, what is, what is your advice? that you would have for somebody that is going through what you're going through, like basically getting out with nothing and just starting from straight scratch, rock bottom and, and to where you're at now, because the one thing, the one thing that it is with everything that you've been through is, you know, me and you have a lot of similarities. You know, I I come from Mm. a poor family too. I was running in the streets early, started at, running away from home when I was 14. Yeah. Um, had a lot of really rough shit happen to me when I was running away in those streets. People don't realize, man, that the streets are rough. Yeah. yeah. And um, so what would be your advice? Ah, uh, man, the don't give up, man. Yeah, the kid They're... that's kid that's looking to run away from home and get away and go out into the streets, what would you tell that kid? Man, stay just tough it out. Stay in school, man, and get that diploma, because school is gonna get you somewhere. The streets aren't, you know. Exactly. Um, every 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 person that I know, you know, and I and I know probably almost a hundred of them that took the street route with, you know, along with me, and they're all in terrible situations. You know, I got one 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 friend that calls me every other day. He's, he's got, he's got 15 more years to do it. And he's at Terra Hutte in Indiana, you know, federal prison. He's, um, you know, I got my buddy, Nick, you know, the one that was my co-defendant twice. Um, and you know, I've hustled with Nick. He's, he's like a brother to me. I've known him since second grade. You know, he's, he's, he's got five or six more years left, you know, and he just got transferred to a, a closed custody facility because Washington, prisons go by um we don't go by levels it's not like level one two or three or four we go by uh camp minimum medium and closed you know so you know that he just you know and you know and you got to worry about that you know because closed custody is where you know shit's popping up people are dying people are you know riots are happening you know one person just got killed two months ago where he's at in Kalalam Bay and they call it gladiator school but it's Kalalam Bay and um also um they had 80 man riot at the beginning of uh last summer I mean it's just you know it's crazy there um you know and also on my page I'm gonna post his info so if, you know if people want to write him or you know message him that they can you know give him you know so some you know because it's always nice to have a pen pal you know you've been yeah, locked yeah up. of course it's always nice to have a pen pal so i'm gonna do that for him i'm gonna do that for my other buddy that's locked up too um and then you know but but that's just two of them you know i mean i got i could keep going you know but um i don't you know want to run it up but um you know that everybody that took that route man has suffered severely you know and there's a few people that i know that aren't getting out you know and it's just, and it's like, you know, and now that we're, we're all getting older and we're in our thirties and we, we look at the people that went the straight route, you know, that finished high school instead of dropping out and doing the, what we did, 
uh, you know, they're married. They're, they, 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 they own their own ha big, big house. You know, they got this really good job. You know, they got really nice cars. They, you know, they, they enjoy themselves. They enjoy life. You know, they're not, you know, they don't got to have an anxiety attack every time they see a, a police officer. They don't, you know, um, you know, that's one of the main things I enjoy is I don't have to, you know, every time I, you know, drive now, I don't have to worry about getting a no insurance ticket. I don't have to worry about getting, you know, going to jail for not having a license. I don't have to worry about my uh, driving a stolen car, or, you know, or, you know, stuff like that. It's just, it's, man, it's really just not the route, man. And it's a route, route that I, I wish, I wish someone would have sat me down when I was a kid and told me, Hey man, you know, if, if, you know, when I first started going into it, if they would have said, Hey man, you know, just, just to let you know, this is what you're getting into. And they actually explain it to me. And, you know, instead of saying, well, here, here, here's a, here's an ounce, take this, or, you know, actually up here, um, an ounce of heroin is called a piece, but most people probably don't know that. So they've, you know, think I was just talking about a piece, but, um, you know, instead of, you know, actually, you know, giving, but you know, it's all about money. And, um, if you want to, if you want to enjoy your money, you got to earn it legitly. You got to, uh, you know, exactly. you got to work, you got to work hard for it. You know, it's not going to come easy. It's not exactly. going to come easy. You got to work hard for it and you got to be, uh, determined and you got to be motivated. And, um, uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, all right, that's, that's, well. that's what I'd tell them. Awesome. I appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, man. Those of you out there that are interested in hearing more about Tyler's story, Tyler's experience, and the many guests that he's going to be having on show, it's called Chain Gang News. And you can find it here in the links. It's going to be in the comment section. It's going to be in the comment section. It's also going to be in the description of this video. Um, we're going to go ahead and close this out by saying that no matter how bad you think you may have it, you know, there's always somebody that's going through what you're going through right now or there's somebody that's already been gone through what you could possibly be facing if you choose to make that bad decision. And on that right there, we're going to go ahead and close Prison Break Raw in the typical fashion that we do. Prison Break Raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, non sugar coat, not politically correct, all up in your face, doing what, Tyler? What are we doing? We're, we're, we're doing it, man. We're slapping them with that dick of reality is what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And we out. Yeah, man.